if you can't tell, it's a little cold. It's winter, that's right. And an organ is probably the most susceptible musical instrument to the cold and the warmth, you know, temp temperature fluctuations as you can get. All of the metal changes shape, which means it goes out of tune. If I was so inclined, I would make sure this room is temperature controlled, but that just seems like an absolute waste of A, money, especially in the energy crisis stuff right now, and B, I mean, what, uh, it just seems a bit silly. Besides, also, in the UK, all of the churches are 200, 500 years old, and none of them have insulation. Apparently, from what I've heard, the organ gets tuned every season change. So that's maybe three or four times a year, depending on their budget, which means that they can tune it to the temperature at that time. But in the last video, we sorted out the foot pedals, so they work nicely, so we've got to start working up to the rest of the console. However, we have a little bit of a problem. When we pulled this organ out of Joan's house, well, the organ bench was nowhere to be seen. And well, basically, you don't want to be playing like this, do you? On a chair. So we've got to either find or make an organ bench first. Making one will be quite simple, but there's something inside me that really wants a proper original organ bench. So let's have a look on eBay, shall we? I found this organ bench on eBay, 35 quid, not bad. But for some reason, I thought Nairsborough was down the road. <laughs> After purchasing it, getting the address and stuff, I suddenly realized that Nairsborough wasn't just down the road. No, it was 300 miles away. Either A, do I rent a van, or B, do I try and travel about 600 miles in a day in my mini whilst carrying an organ bench? Well, if you've seen the thumbnail of this video, you will know that I went for the latter choice. I don't know whether it's gonna make it. I can't see why it won't make it. But there's a few things we need to do to the mini before we can go on this little adventure. Some of you may remember in the last video with the mini where we tried to play it with a theremin, which was completely stupid, completely pointless, and it completely went wrong, that the mini had no dashboard. And I was mentioning, well, it was out because I was working on it. Let's have a look at where we've got with that, shall we? <sighs> oh, ho, ho, dashboard for a mini. Oh, yes, so when I got the mini, it actually had some somewhat of a rally inspired dashboard and it looked quite good in the pictures but then when I got to it, it it was more hot glue than I was expecting so I decided to completely rework the idea what we've done is we've got some aluminium panels I've kind of cut them down they're basically the same panels that I use in modular synthesizers but the big difference is I've used crinkle paint the problem with crinkle paint is it takes an awfully long time to dry a voltmeter we've got a rev counter we've got an oil pressure gauge we've got a thing to turn on the back lights for just these so you could turn them off even if the lights on over there if you don't want the light it's getting in your face. I don't know why. I figured just why not. We've got these old school Lucas extended toggle switches, which means you can flick and reach to the switches easier. There's one for heater. There's one for demist. That's another thing we'll talk about at some point. We've got one for the spotlights. We've got a short one for hazard because the Mini is at an age where it didn't have hazard lights. It's only got indicators. So we're gonna have to make up a little circuit, couple of diodes, and that'll be the hazard light. We're not gonna do that in this video. We're just gonna get this bolted in so we can get over to Nairsborough as quickly as possible. Around the back, it's not the neatest. That's because I found to keep it tidy, then you reduce the ease of troubleshooting. Don't wanna be on the side of the road snipping wax lacing out and stuff like that. Anyway, before we embark on this journey, it'll probably be a good idea to fit this so we know uh, how much fuel we've got left. It's not that cold. Look, I've, I'm not wearing gloves. It's quite nice. But I've looked at the forecast and 300 miles away, it is a bit snowy and icy. So it's gonna be a fun day. Well, it's all right. To be honest, the last couple of weeks whilst it's been raining, I've been underneath here, cleaning all of the bottom of it, all of the undersills and the bits that look a bit questionable. And because of that, I forgot the wheel's not on. Come on. The first thing I'm gonna do, uh, Minis have an ashtray here, some don't have them up here. Well, I got this from Retro Components, just uh, bought it, it's a, uh, it's a phone holder that directly fits in there. So first thing we're gonna do is bolt that one in. Huh, that was that was actually really straightforward. Okay, I think we're there. How the hell are you supposed to do that? Turns out you need extra hands. The dashboard's in, we're gonna be laughing. Oh shit. The idea was good. However, the actual acting upon it. See, a car isn't the same as a synth. I've just learned that today. However, I'm in a bind, so I'm gonna finish the rest of the electrics. Another day. If I flip this. Yep, yep, okay. Ah, oh, spots work. Yes. Because I'm an absolute plonker, I basically got a new heater for it. The other day, I removed the other heater, but then accidentally broke a bit of the new heater because the screw-in hose fittings, they were really cheap and crappy, and I'm waiting for a replacement. So right now, I've only got four layers on, so it's not that cold. But as you can see, for a quick fix for the journey today, I've just put both sides of the heat uh, hose together. So I'm just gonna hide it up there, and uh, yeah, hope for the best. Oh my God. How are you doing this? 
The first leg of the journey. All I know is I've got the roof rack on. The speedo has stopped working since I put it back in the dashboard. Nope, the speedo's not working. Done about five miles so far. The speedo cable doesn't work. A bunch of the dashboard doesn't work, but I, would, I did it in a rush. And also uh, this, uh, the indicator bulb has gone out. So we're gonna swap that. Pull the choke out. Kind of easy. Oh. So I haven't gone a massive amount of the way yet. I started last night and I drove a quarter of the way. It is about 7.38 o'clock in the morning. The biggest problem with not having a heater is you don't get the demisting. You still get all the condensation. I'm gonna have the window open. So last night it was dark, it was raining and it was windy. It wasn't that cold. In the rain, one of the front indicators stopped working. I managed to fix that. This morning, I managed to fix the back indicator. It turned out to be a disconnected wire that I accidentally disconnected in the back of here somewhere. This morning, I filled up the water a bit and there is a bit of steam coming from the engine this morning. It was a bit scary when I stopped. So yeah, it's not gonna be that eventful until we get there, okay? So I'll speak to you then. I'm an hour off now. I've got earplugs in because it does get a little bit annoying after a while, the, the noises. I need a way. I need a way, way. Back up. We go into this world. Hey, hey, hey. Right, we're not far now. We're in Nursborough. Oh, it's up north. We're up north. Oh, yeah. Harrogate City Cows. We made it, and um, it's on the it's on the roof. Yeah, so we've got it strapped to the roof right now. As you can see, it is literally on there. It looks absolutely ridiculous. I bought some extra straps because I don't really trust it because these are these are the weak points that it's trusting on. It's well within the weight limit, but I'm going to strap it around and bring it underneath here. I keep on seeing their reflections. It looks pretty funny. As you can see from the shadow, it's still there. Feels exactly the same. I think it's because it's only about 15 kilograms. <laughs> Off we go. The new roof thing we're doing. Look. We're all right, we're halfway. We've got about five hours of driving left and it's not bad, nice and tight. I've got two going through the inside, that's all right, that's all right. And I've got two that are strapped to the roof rack. So even if the roof rack has a bit of an iffy, well, it's not gonna come off. That's nice and tight. I've got two hours and 120 miles to get halfway and then another 120 miles to get, to get back. So, yeah.
<laughs> right, off we go again. Off we go again. You know what? It's not been that bad at all. I don't really notice it. I've just noticed that it has gone back. Oh my God, I'm going to have to sort this out. Well, I'm glad I stopped. I'm going to have to tighten that up. I've got about 200 miles to go. I'm going to tighten that up. Oops. There we go. Oh, that was sketchy. <laughs> right, here we go. One more stool that costs three times as much to get it as much as it costed in the first place. <laughs> However, sadly, the side that was facing the front, a uh, handful of flies decided to fuse themselves to it. So, um, so rest in peace, my friends. You will be remembered. Oh, yeah. Oh, the keyboard's going to be so good. All right, let's give it a go. <laughs> so now that's ticked off the list in the new year, we just need to get the keyboards and the switches, give it a bit of a tune, and it's going to be finished! <laughs>